Yesterday, I posted a video about Hatun Tash being hit in the face for making fun of Muhammad. Why, why are you so like upset? Maybe your dad looks like that. I don't know. Be honest. If Be my, if my father is like Muhammad, have respect to the like dog. <gasps> I mentioned in the video that the Quran allows men to beat their wives into submission and that Muhammad even allowed his followers to beat their wives until their skin turned green. Not surprisingly, I received some challenges from Muslims who, unlike me, have never read their sources. You should check Quran 434 again, I think. You are a liar. Where is the quote that women were beaten until they wear green? Christian woman, lol. Even practicing Christians respect each other's beliefs. Just tell me where Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, says beat your wives until they turn green. I have a question for you. Were in the Quran this it say that Muslims can beat their wives and were is your proof that the Prophet said that Muslims can beat their wives until their skin go green, you lying sneak? There were lots of comments like this, so let's jump right in. First, Surah 4, verse 34 of the Quran. Men are in charge of women because Allah hath made the one of them to excel the other, and because they spend of their property for the support of women. So good women are the obedient, guarding in secret that which Allah hath guarded. As for those from whom ye fear rebellion, admonish them, and banish them to beds apart, and scourge them. Then, if they obey you, seek not a way against them. Lo, Allah is ever high, exalted, great. What was this scourging in the time of Muhammad? We don't need to guess. Now, I'm not sure why Muslims would challenge me on this one, because I literally put the reference on the screen when I said that Muhammad allowed his followers to beat their wives until their skin turned green. What happens if we type the reference into Google? Oh look, the very first link that pops up is a Muslim site, sunnah.com. We click on the link and we find narrated ikrama. Rifa divorced his wife, whereupon Abdurrahman bin Az-Zubair al-Qurazi married her. So, there's the ex-husband, Rifa, the new husband, Abdurrahman, and the wife. Aisha said that the lady came, wearing a green veil, and complained to her, the woman complained to Aisha, of her husband, and showed her a green spot on her skin caused by beating. It's a good thing she came to Aisha, since so many westernized Muslims assure us that beating women is forbidden in Islam, we know that when Aisha tells Muhammad that a Muslim man beat his wife until her skin turned green, Muhammad is going to punish that man severely. It was the habit of ladies to support each other, so when Allah's messenger came, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. Now I'm confused. It was the habit of ladies to support each other? Why would the ladies need to support each other against their husbands when their husbands all learned Islam directly from Muhammad? Wouldn't these be the best husbands in the world? Then Aisha says, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. That's strange. According to Aisha, the mother of the faithful, Muhammad's child bride who got to see Islam in all its glory, Muslim women were treated worse than pagan women. That's not what modern westernized Muslims tell me at all. If I didn't know better, which I don't, I might think that there's no connection whatsoever between the watered-down, whitewashed, Walt Disney version of Islam that westernized Muslims believe in and the Islam that was preached by the illiterate 7th century caravan robber, Muhammad. Then Aisha says, her skin is greener than her clothes. 
But modern westernized Muslims say I'm lying about Muhammad allowing his followers to beat their wives until their skin turned green. I didn't say it. Aisha did. When Abdurrahman heard that his wife had gone to the Prophet, he came with his two sons from another wife. As we're about to see, these two sons are Exhibit A and Exhibit B. She said, By Allah, I have done no wrong to him, but he is impotent and is as useless to me as this, holding and showing the fringe of her garment. Now, you might already see some trouble brewing. She says that her husband is impotent, but he showed up with two sons from another wife. Abdurrahman said, By Allah, O Allah's Messenger, she has told a lie. I am very strong and can satisfy her, but she is disobedient and wants to go back to Rifah. Aha! She says she's mad at him because he's impotent, but he says she simply wants to go back to Rifah, her ex-husband. Who's telling the truth? Fortunately for everyone, we've got the 7th century Columbo to figure this one out. Allah's messenger said to her, If that is your intention, then know that it is unlawful for you to remarry Rifah unless Abdurrahman has had sexual intercourse with you. That's the first problem for the woman. According to Islamic law, if a man divorces a woman and another man marries her, she can't divorce her new husband and go back to her old husband unless the new husband has sex with her. But the woman with the green skin says that her new husband is impotent, which means that he can't have sex with her, which means that she can never go back to her old husband. So she's stuck with a man who likes to beat her. Then the Prophet saw two boys with Abdurrahman and asked him, Are these your sons? On that, Abdurrahman said, Yes. The Prophet said, You claim what you claim, i.e. that he is impotent, but by Allah these boys resemble him as a crow resembles a crow. In other words, the woman is lying, so the case is closed. Notice, why is this the end of the story? Well, since she's lying about her husband, Abdurrahman, claiming that he's impotent when he isn't, and she's doing it because she wants to go back to her previous husband, this woman is clearly in rebellion against Abdurrahman, and he has every right, according to the Quran, to beat her. Now, to you Muslims who accuse me of lying, because I tell you what your sources say, and you've never read them, and you mindlessly believe your leaders, who lie to you about what your sources say, how many times does this need to happen before you'll finally realize that your leaders are liars and that you shouldn't trust them? Who's telling the truth about Muhammad allowing his followers to beat their wives until their skin turned green? Me. Who's lying? Your imams. Your apologists. But you call me a liar for telling you the truth, and you mindlessly believe your imams who lie to you. Would the true religion cause people to love lies and to hate truth? Let me know what you think in the comments section. For more on Women in Islam, be sure to watch my video, Three Quran Verses Every Woman Should Know.